It's all turning over. Everything's moving internally. Uh, my ears Did you cut through that wiring? We need that wiring. I didn't cut through that wiring. We're going to need it when we're done. I didn't cut. <laughs> we're not using that wire. <laughs> yes! 83-year-old horn still works. Over there. <gasps> All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and pull the heads off of this again. Well, if, why do you ask me if you don't want my opinion? Because... One of these times I'd like for you to be right, and I'm giving you a chance to express the right opinion. What do you call a guy with no body and no nose? Nobody knows. <laughs> Welcome back to Crossroad Garage and Salvage. I'm Steve, and that's Caitlin, my 15-year-old daughter, who I'm trying to teach how to work on old trucks like this 41 Ford that she bought a few years ago. And this week, we're tearing that thing down, getting ready to build it so she's got a truck to drive when she gets her driver's license. If you're new to the channel, we're so glad that you found us. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, family member, coworker, or neighbor about this awesome new YouTube channel you found. Don't believe me it's awesome? Stay all the way through the end. You'll see. It gets good. <laughs> Kaylin? Yes? Need you to grab uh, some air, grab that hose off the reel. Gotcha. Get this one tire. Surprisingly, five of these six tires have maintained all the sailboat fuel that was in them six months ago. So, okay. one leaker. Uh. This is literally everything on our channel. All right, we're gonna try and get the 41 Ford out of here without damaging the uh, Cleveland Indians grounds crew pickup that we just built. Uh, for sale now. Actually, I'm just kidding, it's not for sale. We're just gonna give it to the first person that makes us a reasonable cash offer, you know, like a real YouTuber giving a car away. So, <laughs> uh, of course, to do that, I'm gonna have to get the old chummins out of the way here. So, you missed last week's episode. We put a new interior in this guy, new door cards, new headliner. Um, so, the old Cummins powered rat rod, we actually might need to hook a rope or a chain to this to move that forward, Caitlin. So just use a four wheeler. Anyways, four wheelers in the garage in front of the C10. Oh, I don't right. want to be doing uh, what's that game where you're like sliding cars around a parking lot trying to get the bus out. You know what? <laughs> well, I don't want to do that. So we're just going to drop this out of the garage, pull the 41 around the corner in here so we can pull the front clip and cab off of it and uh, get started on the teardown this week. So hopefully, I don't, I don't know. Most of the time I don't have a plan and when I do have a plan, it rarely ever works the way I thought it would. Well guys, sometimes it's just a little bit easier to get the right tools to get a job done. I did get it turned around and pushed with this, but I I, I don't want to try and push it in there because every time I move, I'm worried about turning the corner of the bed into a fender or something. So we're going to just do the neighborly thing and go use our neighbor's tractor. <laughs>
All right, guys, she's in the garage. So, Kaylin, we need to get the hood off of this first. So let's go ahead and get that up in the air. And there's the latch, the safety latch underneath. There it is, this. Okay, it's either, I can't remember if it's forward or backwards, whichever one it is, the safety latch. But we gotta get the hood up so we can get it off. We're not gonna tear everything off of this. We're not gonna pull hardware and glass and all that stuff. The goal right now is just to get it off of the chassis. There you go. It was already unlocked. So we're going to have to pull this hood. Where's the rake? Uh, the rake, I think, is in the garage next door. Okay. So it's a 1941 Ford truck that was bought from a uh, municipal auction. That's why it's painted orange, the DOT orange. It has had a little bit of damage. You can see had it was parked underneath a tree out in Colorado and some branches fell on it. And uh, yeah, it's no bueno. A little bit of rust down here in the cab corners. I think we can fix that with just some either some sheet metal or we can rat rot it up with some license plates or something. We'll just wrap a license plate around there, treat all that so it stops rotting. You can see the old dump cylinder that was in here. We did take a big metal, like 12 foot bed off of this previously. Um, couldn't get the pin out, so we just torched the end off of that. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do with this frame. I really am very tempted to use this frame to build the 50 Rio that we have out here. The 50 Rio is gonna be our next big project build that's gonna go go on alongside of the 41 here. We're gonna be kind of working side by side. So this is the start of, um, well, it's February, but it's the start of our summer builds because Caitlin's gonna be getting her driver's license in the fall and she's gonna need this cab and front clip on a running driving truck. It's not gonna be this big two ton chassis. Are you done making enough noise up there? Yes. Great. So the story on this thing, as you know, if you've seen some of our older episodes, is that this is an old CCC truck. So the Civilian Conservation Corps, which is a post-Depression era reconstruction project. This indicates, the serial plate here indicates it was built by the Ford Motor Company specifically for the CCC. So it's pretty cool. That's where the old uh, OD green on everything comes from, all this green. Um, all the green on the firewall here. So it does have a flathead V8 in it. And the opposite head here says Mercury right down there. So this is a Mercury head. The other side's a Ford head. Um, I don't know what the block is. I assume it's just a Ford block. Maybe they were the same, I don't know. You can tell where the, where the um, thermostat housings are on the top of the heads there, that they're forward, so this is an 8BA, which means this, that motor is not original to this truck anyways. So um, the plan is to pull that 8BA flathead V8 out of there, and we're gonna rebuild it. Whether it goes back into Caitlin's truck or not, I'm not sure. It is gonna go in a future project for sure, but Caitlin does not want it in hers. I think it would look really cool but she is pretty tuned into the idea of having a diesel pickup like her dad's. And I can't, I can't hate that idea. Cause it's awesome. So I don't know what you're doing there. Trying Working to get the key out. The key out? Well, we don't want anybody to steal it. So make sure you get that key. <laughs> so she's had a little bit of trouble in her life, but look, the guy that did the rivet repair here, I, I mean, I don't know what they paid him, but I can tell you this, it wasn't enough because that rivet job is on point. Hood off, front clip off, cab off, and then throw the chassis back outside. I don't know, maybe before we're done this week, we'll pull that motor out of there too so it's not sitting out in the weather. We can stuff it over in the corner over here and let it rust over there. The thing with this week is Caitlin and I only have basically two afternoons because by the time this video publishes, I'll already be home from the trip that I'm taking but I've got another trip coming up for work. And so we've basically got this afternoon, this evening, and then one more day this week. Otherwise we're gonna lose the shop. No, otherwise we're just gonna be. What? <laughs> 
Otherwise, we're just going to be late getting this video out and this work won't be done. So, so I know the key is like super important to get out of there. It is because I have your key to your truck and I want my key to my truck. Well, you know what? If you leave it right there in the ignition, we will know right where it is when we go to get it next time. But for now, let's start by tearing the body apart. If you haven't had a chance to go over to crossthreadgarage.com yet and grab yourself some new merchandise, make sure you do that today. Uh, all the merchandise sales over there, the t-shirts, the hats, the stickers, the sweatshirts, the hoodies, it all goes to Caitlin and helps her fund this project. All right, so these uh, hinges are held on with two bolts that go through the firewall here and here. So Caitlin's on the inside getting some PV blaster on there. Um, Yoink. Soak them down. I just noticed this here. What? That looks to me like it was part of a hinge assembly that would have held the hood up, maybe? Yes, that is what that is. I don't know. Interesting. I also noticed that. Well, we don't need that where we're going. <laughs> what is this pedal? Well, that would be the gas pedal. Oh, right. Wait. So the. Oh, break it. Oh, stupid. Break it. What is Clutch. all these? Those are for the PTO for the dump bed. Oh. And the linkage seems to be loose. That's interesting. That just seems to be floating on those right there and right here. Oh boy. The whole front end is floating oh boy. on those. That's one. Oh. It looks like there's another one. I'm getting too old for this. Up in here somewhere. So we're going to want to keep these. Whatever we do next, we're going to have to be nice if we could leave this connected to the step and actually just cut it back here. That might be the thing to do. I don't know. If you guys haven't figured it out yet, um, we're not restoring this truck. We're not going to be making it like it was. We are going to be putting this old body onto a more modern chassis so that it's more serviceable and drivable and reliable for a 15 year old to be driving regularly. All right, first bolt. Guys, we've got the distinct advantage of working with a truck here that sat out in the desert. So while we're spraying everything down with PB Blaster, it's really just precautionary. I don't think we're gonna need to, to do that on everything. Second one just broke loose. Yep. Yeah, loose this is gonna be easy. Uh, that was much harder than I thought it was gonna be, guys. You're gonna have to get your hand under it here to hold it. This one's gonna have to pull in there and then we're gonna have to flex it out to pull those studs out of the firewall and we should be able to just come forward, okay? Right. Okay. What just fell? Probably the- Were there washers on? I don't- Hold on. Yes, there might have Okay, here's your out. Come do that to the other side. We'll just let it sit up there on the on the firewall. That was a really gross feeling. Okay. I'll come back to this side. Oh, that's a lot lighter than I thought it was. I think what I want to do take now. Take a break and call it a day. No. I think I'd like to see if we can get the the fender and the grill and these side inner fenders. I'd like to get that all out in one piece. So while Caitlin's grabbing that step over there, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this fuel tank out. Um, we don't really need to get it out to get the cab out, but it is gonna have to come out because we gotta really assess what the floor looks like underneath it. And then also we're not gonna be putting a bench seat back in here that fits on top of this. And we're not gonna be using this fuel tank. So it doesn't need to stay in there. So I gotta cut this hose or yeah, I don't think that's gonna be, that's like rock solid. So we'll just cut that hose off and um, I think we're gonna leave the filler neck in the cab with that custom STP, what'd that say? New improved oil treatment, add to your oil. We'll do. Can you give me Later a longer on. one of these? You need a deep well socket or an extension? Well, wait, I'm stupid. Oh, okay. 
All right, I think I've got everything disconnected. Kaylin, pick up on uh, pick up on that side to get it over the bolt, so I can get that. Huh? I disconnected the fuel line underneath. Actually, I cut it with a cutoff wheel. Turns out there was no fuel in the line, which was a good afterthought. <laughs> what is it stuck on? I don't know. When in doubt, kick it out. Hey, that is in really great shape. Oh, I'm caught. It's okay guys, we're gonna cut that because pretty sure the fuel gauge isn't gonna work on this thing. Yeah. Guys, look at the bottom side of that fuel tank. That's all original paint. Shut off valve underneath. That went through the floor. This, this, this gasket down here sealed the floor. I would say that is a 100% usable fuel tank for a 41 Ford mm -hmm. or for any other project we ever wanna do. All we'd have to do is change that ball valve out Put something else in there. But the top is great. New sending unit up top there would be ideal. The thing that probably saved this fuel tank is the fact that it was empty. Somebody had drained it out. Oh, Caitlin, the will it start video we did on this? I know why it wouldn't start. It ain't got no gas in it. Things we should have checked. Number one next time, does it have fuel? Oh boy. Yeah, you need to clean that up. Well, I'm just under here checking on Caitlin's work and notice. Hey, noise make noise maker. Sorry, the whole entire thing just came. I know. She's working in the cab. But the frame still has this factory green paint on it. And the back of the step still has the factory undercoating on it. The condition of this truck is really astounding. For being, how old is this truck, Caitlin? 1941 to 23, 24 is what? 85. 41. Or 80, 83. Well, 40 to 2060 plus 24 is 84 minus one, 83. Yeah, you're right, 83. 83-year-old truck. So I'm gonna grab the torch and cut the bolts off that we couldn't get to come out. You do that. Because some of these bolts are actually kind of messed up. Um, they were, the threads were messed up, so they stripped out. So we've got nuts that are just spinning on the, on the uh, bolts, so. Right up against it. You're just gonna watch it slough off of there. It's still catching. There you go. Don't, don't bend it. That's good. Okay. I actually didn't think that was going to fall. So. That's, uh, you know, perfect. Yeah. That's really a tall truck when the air is in the tires. <laughs> Uh, that was much harder than I thought it was going to be, guys. It was like uh, one, two, three, Hours. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts just holding those running boards on, plus the two brackets that are riveted to the frame. So, um, yeah, we burned it out. It's fine. It's off. No, this is like a big truck. But... Next step is going to be pulling a couple of bolts out of the firewall down here on the outside of fender. And same thing on that side. We're actually just gonna try and take this whole clip up and off of there. Um, there's almost, at this point, there's no chance that we're using this frame. Um, so I think what we're gonna do is just cut these off. We can still use these later on and just weld a new bracket in here um, if we have to, or we can actually just take them off and just run a post straight down to the frame on either side, that'd be fun. 
When you're cutting underneath the truck in the dark, make sure that your light is not right underneath where you're cutting. Otherwise you end up burning slag holes in your LED light. Oh, we're gonna have to disconnect the steering too and get those pedals out of there. Sounds but like future me and you. That's a problem for future Steve, huh? I sure do like this truck. Who am I kidding? I like any old truck. We need to name it. I need to name it. Traffic cone. No. Yeah. Traffic cone. Conita. I think this thing's sitting on a four wheel drive chassis up as high as it is right now with some like 32 inch tires on it. Would be super cool. Would be pretty sweet. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool too. Pretty sweet. And you're, you're talking about liking it without a bed on it. I kind of do like it without a bed. I kind of like the, the look of I'd want a, this like a, pond. well, yeah, obviously, actually the whole, we're going to leave this on the frame because the whole frame is going to go away. But I like the idea of putting a, like a kingpin hitch, like a semi mm -hmm. right here and making it look like a, like a hot shot rig, like an old semi. We could even, if we're going to go diesel, we could even put, put smoke stacks. stacks yeah. yeah. We could put stacks behind it. That That'd would be really advice. make the Ford enthusiast mad, huh? Carl, Conita, Quincy, first. No. Uh, it's not your truck. I'm gonna call it traffic cone. All right, we're back in the garage this evening. Um, kind of down to the last few hours we have to work on this thing this week. So we've got three bolts in here. Um, the easiest thing to do here, I think, is just gonna be to use a cutoff wheel and just cut the heads off those bolts, let them fall. That should let loose this whole side. And then same thing on that side, three bolts, and the whole front clip should come off of there because we believe in safety third around here. Caitlin's gonna get some glasses, but they're gonna be the ones that you can't hardly see through and she's not gonna wear any gloves. All right, let's do it. Hold on. Never mind. You're gonna have to come off of that fender. Uh, don't twist, don't twist. You're stuck on the bumper. There you go. Oh my days. Oh, it's naked. That truck will look sweet without a front clip on it. We should hot rod it, get like a 32 front. Like how little the engine is. Grill and radiator. Make it look like a hot rod pickup. Yeah, like what? It would solve the, it would solve the problem of what we're gonna do with the grill. Hey, what do you call a guy with no body? And no nose. Nobody knows. <laughs> I actually knew that one. Yes. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. So this perfectly illustrates, doesn't illustrate, it actually shows the cab attachment. So it's a spring loaded wood block. Look how clean that is. I know. It's the whole thing is just incredible. Oh, hey, we should pull that off and see if we can make that thing honk. Hello? I don't know which one of these is ground, but I don't think it'll matter. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! 83 year old horn still works. Hold but, right here. Yeah, just cut anywhere right there. Yep, just cut right through that. Now pull the trigger. Well, that's not working. Well, maybe don't sit on the tire. Maybe hold it like a man. You gotta get a groove cut in it to begin with, so get it perpendicular so it cuts instead of walks around on you. Go. 
Did you cut through that wiring? You need that wiring. I didn't cut through that wiring. We're going to need it when we're done. I didn't cut. <laughs> we're not using that wire. <laughs> we are using this fuel line though, so don't, you know, don't wreck that fuel line. All right, Caitlin is going to grab a pair of needle nose pliers to get this uh, safety pin, this cutter pin out of here. And then she's going to run these bolts down off of there. There's one here, there's one in the back inside the frame, and then one in the back here. It's actually inside the frame. It's the same on the other side, so. There's one on the other side and there's one where? Back here. You see, it, it goes through here. Oh, how am I but supposed to cut off? On the inside of the frame. You can get right to it. Oh, all right. You just need a light. All right, since you're getting so good with that sawzall, let's just go ahead and nip these levers off. We don't need any of them. We don't need any of the mechanism there. Uh, if we use the flathead motor, we're not gonna be using this transmission or that rear end or that PTO setup. So mm -hmm. cut all that off. Okay. <laughs> Are your ears tickling? For those of you wondering, the beautiful thing about working with metal is when you cut it in half, you can just go fire up that electric generator over there and put some copper wire on it and it oh, glues it back together oh, so we got all kinds of options all kinds of options and we don't have to fight that We're not trying to get the cab up high enough to go over top of all this stuff was it so. or what That's was a reverse this? lockout mm. so if you're going into reverse you have to pull that up i think that's what it was i don't know never driven a 1941 ford before oh, if you have, have correct me Kaylin, you think we can cut these pedals off up front? Uh, no. Cut them in here. No. We can get to them right here. Well, if, why do you ask me if you don't want my opinion? Because one of these times I'd like for you to be right, and I'm giving you a chance to express the right opinion. I definitely will not be getting the little one. Look. Wait a second. There's supposed to be three pedals. No, the gas pedal's on the firewall. Never mind. I can get this one. You can get both of them. No, I can't. You can. Whether you Why will can't? or not, I don't know, but you can. When we go to build back our linkage, we can actually use this, trim it, bend it, do whatever we want. Bop we could it. use that. Bop it. <laughs> no, not bop it. <laughs> we could Twist still it. use that as a brake pedal. Which would be cool. All right, you gonna get the clutch pedal or are you gonna make me get it? I, your turn. I have to hold it. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and pull the heads off of this again. We've done this in a previous episode, but it's been sitting for several months with the heads just basically hand tight. So I'm not sure if we've got more moisture or rust in there than we had before. So I do wanna pull the heads and see what kind of condition we're looking at here. Okay, hey, Caitlin's gonna grab the vacuum and clean this up because we've got, well, corn for one. We're gonna get all this junk vacuumed out of here so we don't drop it down in there. This is the, you, could you be any louder? I don't know why I asked. I, the answer was obviously Yes. All right, guys, here's what we're looking at. Um, not a lot of rust, really not much rust at all, but there's something in the back two cylinders. It looks like tree sap, but it's- And neat. corn? I don't know what that could be. Water and corn and mold. I wonder why it would be in the back too. I wonder if, I don't think it could be dried coolant. I guess it could be. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Green. Hold on, let me from, see that. You know. I don't see anything like standing out. Get that bar behind you. 
it would be problematic here. Which valves have moved so far? This, this one's. One, this one, this one. so far so I'm not gonna try and get it started that's not the point of this video we've done one already on this um, we're at a phase where it's obvious we're gonna be rebuilding it so we're not I don't think we're even gonna throw a battery on here although we could we could just took a battery up to this starter solenoid because there's a button underneath was that like kitchen fire last time no but right under, a button under here what? yeah so you can actually stand out here and run that starter off that push button. Guys, this is what the inside of that cylinder wall looks like. Here's that one. It's all turning over. Everything's moving internally. So, Kaylin, I think for now we're good. Okay, so the summary here this evening is the motor's free, the valves are all moving. The horn works. The horn works, that's a big plus. Uh, we disconnected the steering without straightening up the front wheels, so, you know, got that going for us. Um, we have a fan that for sure is worth at least $5. And a cab that's just sitting on there waiting to get picked off. What we've run into here, guys, is a slight problem. It has to do with my normal work schedule. Um, I, By the time this posts, I'll be home. But I fly out today for a quick work trip. And I thought I flew at 3.30. So I thought we'd have time this morning to grab this. That's probably good. That's probably good. Come to this side. I thought we'd have time to grab this cab off of here this morning. But uh, turns out I read my itinerary wrong. Get that other one. And I don't fly out this afternoon. I fly out this morning. So we're quickly covering up this block. That's good. That's good. Because it's going to sit here while we're gone. And, you know, it's just, it's Ohio. Everything rusts pretty quickly when it's exposed. So... We're getting that oiled down so we don't end up with any surface rust, especially inside of these nice clean cylinders. Uh, the cab is already loose, ready to go. We just need to pick it off of there. <gasps> so when we get back, the next episode you guys see, we're gonna pick that cab off of there, but we're also gonna pull the motor, get it up on an engine stand, tear that thing down, and really see what we're working with here. We're gonna get inside of it, basically take it down to a, a block that we can take to a machine shop, have uh, magma flux, see if there's any cracks. If it's a buildable block, we'll make some decisions then about what we're doing with it. Right, Caitlin? So if you wanna see the best way not to do something in an incredibly entertaining fashion, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and join us next week, all right? See you there, then, yeah. Not now, we'll see you then. Not, we'll not, see you then. We won't now, not, not this moment. See you. You will be seen then.